Hey everyone, this is your resident World Film Geek, Albert Valens, and welcome to the latest episode of the World Film Geek Podcast, where we have exclusive interviews with actors and filmmakers in global and indie cinema. Today's interview is with Christine Chen, the co-writer and producer and director of the mermaid horror film, Ursuli, which stars Zoe Graham, Courtney Olivier, and Layla Antoinette Scott in the titular role. The film is getting a one-week engagement at the Lamley Theater in Glendale, California from May 27th to June 2nd. Those of you in the area should go check out this movie, and uh, considering our interview, you should hear why, that this is definitely a popcorn flick, and uh, one that you can classify as not really a feminist film, but a female revenge film with uh, shades of elements from classic filmmakers. I hope you all enjoy this interview. Cool. Okay. So, Christine, thank you for taking the time to uh, talk about Ursula. I actually watched it uh, this morning and I liked it. I was like, I was surprised at it because, you know, these killer mermaid movies tend to have the same type of thing going on. But this one, I was completely like, real, like, I really liked how it came out with like so many twists in the story and everything. So, I mean, I got to say, great job on this film. Thank you so much. That makes me really, really happy. Oh, we wanted to make something different. And uh, we hit a lot of different messages in there. We're hoping that people have fun, but still learn something, so. Yeah, so how, how did this come about? Where did the idea come from? Sure, so I I grew up loving mermaids. Uh, the Little Mermaid was a big thing to me growing up as a kid. I had mermaid sheets, mermaid anything, and uh, there was a one summer in the pool. I just threw out like, hey, I really would love to do a mermaid film. And my friend said, me too. And I said, well, shit. So <laughs> then, <laughs> so I went home that day, wrote a seven page uh, treatment, which I found uh, not too long ago. And it follows the similar beats to the, the feature script. Um, and uh, the feature script, I ended up co-writing with a friend of mine, uh, Camille Gladney. And that's when we actually delved deep into the folklore of uh, Ursley. Ursley is a real goddess, actually. She's a Haitian voodoo goddess. And uh, that's where the whole other film came out to be. But I mean, originally it was just a like, I had an image in my head and the image was a killer mermaid. And uh, a lot of things were happening during that time. Trump, no offense to any Trump supporters out there, was making me very angry. And I was like, you know what? I wish there was like a avenging women type film. And uh, Ursley was kind of my um, commentary to that. So I mean, I found, that's the scene I found interesting when some of the girls are freaking out when they first meet Ursley, except for the one of uh, Veronica. She was all like, I want justice. <laughs> men. Like, how they, like, wow, I guess all men they're so scummy and you know basically like she's presented like all men are scumbags like that's yeah you know, I know there's I know there's any guys out out there saying oh well this is an anti-men movie you know what it really is not it's not yeah you know, honestly, it's not just for the record guys it is not an anti it's not a movie against men okay it's just for it's not a, it's not a complete feminist movie let's just put it that let's just get that out there now but but even though she was against it, there's even there's characters who were, you know, against Ursula. They felt like she's going to, you know, she might be too much for everyone, despite yeah. the fact that, yes, all the victims in the movie just happen to be guys. But that's just it's just pure coincidence. I, 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 <laughs> at least that's what my viewpoint is. That is that is correct. Uh, we wanted to make sure that, you know, there there's there's a nice guy in there. And, and it's it's not that we hate men because we don't. We love men that support us. Um, and so I think Wendy's reaction is that gut reaction that you have, we have as women when like we are wronged and we just want to like, sometimes you just want to go to the most extreme uh, version of uh, the solution. And I think the other women are like, wait a minute, you know, you're, this is not exactly the right way to go about it either and so, right. so i think that's the that's the fun part that's a, yeah that, exactly that conflict between how to go about it because you got you know we think about those type of the extreme movies the, you know the extreme like i spit on your grave ms 45 you know and then you got the ones who are you know the other side so this is more of like i felt this is a balance between the two because yes you did have some graphic violence in this film <laughs> like we did see some gross body parts at times but 
you know, at the same time, it's, you know, it's just a film about, and, and, and I like the fact that they, they protect her from, you know, all these dangers. And I also felt in the way that people were invading her territory, the lake or the river, which is why they shut it down. But it was in a way, it was, it was protecting the river, which is why in the opening sequence, you see the one guy get killed, like right before the credits roll. And, and you know, I've, it, it had, it's that, that's that whole horror trope where, you know, someone's invading your property. You're, you're going you're gonna to do something to protect yourself. Yes. Your property, that, 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 your territory. That's, that's what I felt. Yes. And you, you're exactly right. We wanted to show, like, in her head, in Ursley's mind, this is the way she protects women and children. But, you know, in society's world, that's not exactly the right way to go about things. But, like, I think the biggest thing is, like, be careful what you wish for, you know? Like, yes, we, we, we all have different sides to us and we all are a product of our environment and you know it's easy to jump to an extreme to make that a way to solve our problems and if you notice all the women have different ways in which they deal with problems and that was intentional yeah. um yeah it was, it was and i gotta say the cast in this was stellar uh, i totally they were amazing in this film um what was it like working with them especially layla scott who plays early she was she was, she was, she phenomenal, was, right? she was scary. At she was phenomenal, but she scared the crap out of me at times. Good. Just, just the way she, yeah. the way she presents herself. Like she reminded me of Wishmaster when she said, I'll grant you anything you want. That was like when I saw Wishmaster, he just scared the crap out of me because he Good. just, you know, so that's, that what, that's what I got with this film. Yes. So the women, um, I really wanted to cultivate a like real relationships between the four and i'm glad that you picked up on that that it is a really real they're all friends now which is great um mm -hmm. but i put them all <clears throat> three two of them three three of them lived in the same house the picture house that you see um mm -hmm. they all they live there and then everybody else was, could could go and you know hang out and they all hung out together during the duration of the shoot so that chemistry was real um I knew three of them already from previous projects. I, when I'm not directing, I AD um, on the side. And so I, I had worked with some, um, Diana Rose plays Ari, Elizabeth True the plays uh, Violet. I, they've been in my other films before, short films prior. Uh, Ursley, Layla, was actually a wild card. Uh, I, when we wrote the film, we were like, who the heck can we find that's going to represent this film, you know, we had a lot of submissions, but you know, there aren't a lot of black um, mermaid goddesses that are just roaming around. And uh, her audition came. Uh, I remember in Austin at that point, I was on a film set. They, they we were experiencing what we now term snow bin. So it was icy and uh, it was a whole thing it snowed through austin into havoc and uh in between moving locations i was you know it came in through a link i looked at it and i was i just it made me stop like she had this presence of holier than thou that i wanted which is like just her energy of i've seen things in this world that you've never seen and i am wiser and you know just there's this energy that you can really just feel and uh yet she has so much personality so you so though she's like you you want to trust her there's this like if i do something wrong i could be very much she's still a wild feral you know creature so she has that about her which i which i love and and then she did a lot of her own research and i think that led to led to the authenticity of the role um she studied haitian creole so that was her input into the film we actually hadn't written some of the spells um, in that language she herself took it upon her to study the language and yes she translated and created her own spell. And so that was very much her. And I think that lent to that. Um, that's impressive. That's yeah. that's dedic that's that's got that's dedication. I, I agree. Think, I think actor, actors can pick up on should pick up on that. They should, they need to hear that aspiring actors should should definitely listen to this episode so they can they can get an idea like what advice would you give? Listen to I'll be like listen to the Urzuli episode yeah. because this 
this actress. Yeah, and she went, yeah, she went beyond anything. And I, and, and I, it really shows like she is Ursley, you know? Yeah. She's and I, and the makeup effects were great with her when she has the, the, the demonic look, the creature look, yeah. because it reminded me of, it actually reminded me of the movie Demons, where okay. Dario, Dario Argento's Demons, the first, the first woman who becomes a demon, she's also a woman of color. And it had, the, she looked, she had the same eyes as Ursula, you know? So that's what I, that's what scared me right away. I'm like, whoa! I'm like, wait a minute, whoa, whoa, whoa! Was this a doppelganger? What, what? But like I said, she did a great job on that. And then I, I love that we have the stereotypical rednecks as the bad guys because they were <laughs> those. Were, I was I, I was waiting for. I was like, when I saw them I, when I saw them and they start acting all you know like typical rednecks with the guns. I'm like, yeah. Oh, okay. I was like, oh man, I just can't wait for these guys to get there. <laughs> I was like, I was waiting for like, oh, this is good. This is going to be fun. No, no. <laughs> and like the one who's like, when he sees the one guy get killed, he's like, and he gets all scared. He's like, oh, it's all scary. And yeah. I was like, I was just, I started laughing. I'm like, oh good. man, I'm like, this is so, this is so stereotypical at this point, but it's fine. I'm glad because I'm. Uh, this is just, this is justice for these women and what they're about to go through and it's just amazing thank you yes yeah i i because i loved i love there's revenge films that are just super fun and i don't think there are that many women revenge films out there and so this was yeah, not as, yeah not as many as there used to be there used to be a big thing in the 80s i remember the 80s that was like the that was like the, the decade of like the women revenge films there were so many yeah times. but yeah we don't get as many of them now as we do but I'm, so I'm glad that we're, you know, this bring is, it back. <laughs> bring it back, exactly. Yeah. What, so, did you have any favorites of those type of films? Growing, like, did you? Yeah. So, The Craft was a big one that a lot of people refer to for the film. I did. Um, I, did I thought of that too, actually, because of the four girls. I thought. Yeah, the four four girls. Yeah, the one who, the one who yelled, you know, you know, justice against men. I'm like, oh, that's that's Nancy. <laughs> <laughs> like that, that was the Nancy of the group. Yes. Um, but for me, really, anything that was Steven Spielberg was a huge inspiration for me. Um, I love a lot the way Steven Spielberg like shoots certain things. So, you know, the crash zooms in there were definitely taken from his style. And um, I just related it to all the films that I, I watched as a kid during, you know, sleepovers. And like when there's the four girls and you can relate to each of them. So um, I would say see, anything is built species. I, I refer to that a little bit. Uh, there's a line in there that's a homage to species that Pierce says uh, that was on purpose as well. Um, but yeah, no, I, I wanted this to be a callback to 80s, 90s um, horror. And, and a lot of people mentioned the Goonies um, it, it, you know, what's funny is I had did not see the Goonies until the after the film, because so many people said, oh, this reminds me of the Goonies that I went, I had to go watch the Goonies after I made the <laughs> film. And then when I watched it, I was like, aha, I, I see how the yeah, I, I see. I, I kind of yeah. see a little bit of that as well. I, I now, now that you mentioned the Goonies, I'm like, well, yeah, I can kind of see that the rednecks were the Fratelli gang. Basically. Yeah, That's yeah. What it was. So but yeah. I, I actually hadn't seen that film until uh, people told me that it reminded me of that, reminded them of that, and then I went to to see the so, film. So I, I hope people who get to see this will understand that she did not she did not get inspired by the Goonies because she saw it yeah. after. So let's just let's let's, let's verify that. <laughs> well, we did do some homages to a lot of mermaid films. So Splash, there's yeah. some imagery that are very splash oriented. Um, there are some lines from the Little Mermaid that are subtly pickled in there. There's actually a line; it didn't deliver exactly how it should have been. But um, Pulp Fiction, there's a line in Pulp Fiction that made it in there that I don't know if if people can. I'm interested to know if anybody would pick up on that. But right, uh, I'm gonna have to see it again. I, I will see it again and, and try to figure it out. I'll give you a hint. <laughs> Rhett says it. So. Oh. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but, um, yeah. I'm gonna have to watch. I'll watch it again. <laughs> I'll, start, I'll see if I can decipher it. <laughs> yes, yes. But I wanted to call back to some of these uh, just '90s um, cult films because I, I really believe that this is that it's a cult film. It's 
It's meant oh, it's to. Destined. It's destined. Yeah. It's destined to be a cult. Yeah, it, I, it's meant to be. We have a whole drinking game that's like attached to it, and then uh, it's it's meant to be washed like on a lawn in the summer for fun. And, oh yeah, yeah. I can see. I can see this playing. I used to live in New York near the city, so I could see this playing at one of the the local theaters downtown where they would play like the midnight features. I could definitely yes. see it as one of the midnight yes. movies that over there for sure. Yeah. So I'm glad you caught that. Yeah, no, I, I felt that after, since we're getting it done with the tail end of the pandemic, um, this was actually not the film I was supposed to make. I was supposed to make what I would coin a, an Oscar bait film. <laughs> so it's a, something like dark and dreary and serious. And But then I'm like, hey, people have been in a pandemic. They want to be out with their friends and hanging out and stuff. So this is the film I decided to make. Um, so that people can do that. So, well, technically, it is kind of Oscar bait when you get inspired by Steven Spielberg and some of these other films like Tarantino. So, yeah, you can kind of, you know, some ways you could say it's a little bit of Oscar bait. A little so. bit. <laughs> a little bit. You can say a little bit. I, I would say a little bit, but yeah, I would agree. It's it's definitely a popcorn movie for sure. But that's yes. Definitely. So, what is next for you after after this film? So. Ideally, I have been already thinking of the sequel because, as you know, there's oh yeah, oh yeah, yep. yeah, yeah, yeah. We put all the little, the little, you know, seeds yeah. in there, planted them. So I will definitely be thinking about right. I already know the, how the world will be. I want to open it up internationally, but it will require funding. This yeah. was made with no very little funding. So, um, but that's that. Um, I have. A pilot that I'm working on. I uh, have some more what I do, which is darker uh, drama type stuff that I'll probably be writing. But the sequel is definitely on my mind. Um, hoping, hopefully, it'll happen sooner rather than later. And I'm hoping that we will not have to shoot in a freaking swamp in Louisiana. So <laughs> that was very hard. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, speaking of that, how long did shooting take? And what, you know, what, what was that? Yeah, you, know, you mentioned shooting in Louisiana. What was that? Yeah, it was so hard. Uh, a lot of the things that you see on screen, we had a lot of limitations because of our location. Uh, as you know, they were in a real swamp. We weren't in a heated pool of any sort. And uh, there are alligators and snakes in this swamp. So we had you know, uh, an animal wrangler that would go in and scare off whatever animals there are. We had a water safety person. Um, when I wrote it, I had been on the location prior because I worked on a few projects on this location. And the water was at that point, you know, just at my waist. But when we got there, the beach that had written 60% of the film on was entirely flooded. Oh. Uh, so yeah, we had to adjust our schedule a lot because, you know, like the finale, for example, they it takes place on the beach. Yeah. And most of the time the beach wasn't there, it was underwater. Um, the camera department actually had a joke where they had this piece of land that they would stand on it. And every time they would go there, it would just, it would be smaller and smaller and smaller. And they'd be like, is camera island still there? You know, there's days when camera island no longer existed, it was under the water, so. Um, but it was 11 days of principal photography. Originally, I wanted 15, but budget. Yeah. And uh, it was uh, shot completely there. We had no pickup. Oh, we had no pickups on location. The, we had one day of pickups in Austin, Texas and, that I shot, actually. So the underwater stuff that you see, um, mm -hmm. I personally shot um, because we ran out of money and I had to do it. So I, I shoot a lot and I love filming. And so uh, it was me in my friend's pool when they went to vacation. So <laughs> <laughs> they're like, can you watch our house? I'm like, sure. Can I bring a whole film crew? <laughs> <laughs> they're like, yeah, okay, I guess. <laughs> like, I guess, yeah. So yeah, I... I, I went underneath the water and shot all the fun underwater stuff and uh, had a blast and uh yeah so that's low budget filmmaking for you and all. this is why people need to support indie film because these people go above and beyond the line of duty to make these films happen Can't yes 
I, I can't stress that enough. We don't have like money to throw marketing to pay people to go watch this film and say good things about it. We've been doing a tour. Um, I am at the middle of my tour uh, in Los Angeles this weekend uh, for a theatrical limited at Lemley Glendale, actually. And uh, we just came from the California Mermaid Convention in Sacramento. And we're gonna, later after this, we're gonna go to a mermaid parade in Portland and a mermaid museum in Washington. But uh, it's been completely just grassroots, it's just me, me and my team, um, which usually sometimes it's the cast, sometimes it's just Layla, the, the mermaid, originally right. going around and being like, please watch our film. <laughs> So I'm glad, I'm so glad that you enjoyed it and you understood what we were trying to do. So that's awesome. So this film, so right now you, you mentioned this weekend, it's going to be playing at the Lamley and Glendale. Yes, Lamley and Glendale, 7.30 p.m. Every single night starting opening night of May 27th. It's almost sold out actually May 27th, but there's plenty of seats for the other day. So it, it will play for one week until June 2nd, one week only. Um, and there's some parties and stuff to, to come and meet the cast, uh, but the, only the 27th, 28th, and 29th will have a Q&A with me because after the 29th, I have to go to back to Louisiana to do, there's another, there's one screening in, in Shreveport and I have to be on set as well in Shreveport. So that, so that's why I can't be there every single day of the, the, the screening, but yeah, one week only, 7.30 p.m. at the Lemley Glendale. I personally dropped off the DCP and it works, so it should be fun. Yeah. <laughs> so I hope everyone out there gets to see this movie because you're all going to have a ball with this one. And I hope you do listen to Christine and pick up on some of these classic one-liners that you're going to hear. And yes, I want to see what people can pick up on. Yeah. If anyone, if anyone picks up that Pulp Fiction line, the one, she's, the one she talked about, just remember Rhett was the one who, bring, who says yes. it. Yes, Rhett says it. it. I will give a swag t-shirt, here's one of them, to anyone who picks, I will literally mail it to you for anyone who can figure out what that Pulp Fiction line is for Ray. Right. Yeah. So you, you, hear that, you hear that fan, so yeah. just remember that when, so just remember that when you're, when you're watching this movie, she, yeah. you heard this. I'm, I'm, I'm a witness, okay? Yes, you <laughs> witness. Witness. I will sign it and I will send it to you because I, because it's not word. The problem is it's not word for word because it got improv just a tad by Jason Kirkpatrick, who plays Rhett. Mm -hmm. But there is, in fact, also many memes surrounding this particular line from Pulp Fiction. So maybe that's another hint as well. Okay. Yes. So remember that, guys. We're, we're gonna have fun with this one. <laughs> Down. We're we're gonna have a, we're gonna have a blast with this movie. Let's just put, let's put it that way. <laughs> And I hope you guys do if you get to see the movie, because if you do, you're all you're in for a treat. And Christine, you're awesome. And I hope the sequel does happen. I, I will be first in line to see it. Yay. I hope so, so too. Yes. And thank you so much for taking the time to talk about it. Thank you so much for your time over. I really, really appreciate it. So. All right. Well, you stay safe and I hope you have a ball at the at the at uh, Glendale this weekend. Perfect. Yes. All right, yes. You, you too. All right, bye bye.